We wanted to share just a brief devotional, a devotional thought for this particular Christmas. And what I'm going to share with you is part imagination and part what we can establish from Scripture. So let your imagination go with me as we imagine Christmas Eve a couple thousand years ago. Of course, we see a stable setting in Bethlehem, some stable animals, Mary and Joseph the manger, and out in the field, shepherds watching over their flocks by night. Everything's in place except the wise men because they really don't come for another year or two. Yes, this is the scene, all right. At least this is the scene as far as man can see. What's missing from this scene is what we can't see. It's the angels. Yes, I know they appeared to the shepherds in their fields, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. But that was after baby Jesus was born. The angels told the shepherds to go find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. He was already born. But I believe with all my heart that the stable was crowded with angels before the birth of Jesus. Why? Because this was the fullness of times, according to Galatians 4.4, which says, When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman. The fullness of times. Human history is personified here. Human history is made out to be a pregnant woman. The gestation period is much longer than nine months, more like 8,000 years or so. This is the moment all of heaven has been waiting for. The angels have been watching all these thousands of years for just this moment, the moment of the birth of the Messiah. Of course, the angels knew about the Messiah. Gabriel explained God's timing for the birth of the Messiah to Daniel. The angels have and had much more knowledge than we humans, but they're still created beings without full knowledge and understanding. That's why this whole salvation plan was such a curiosity for them. 1 Peter 1 says, They inspected carefully this mysterious plan of salvation. It's as though they got down on their hands and knees and were looking at a trail of ants. They especially couldn't understand a plan of salvation which included suffering before glory. Why? They had never suffered. But they knew the second person of the Godhead. They had worshipped Him for who knows how long. But now He has left His throne of glory in the third heaven. For nine months, He's been localized within the womb of a young girl, Mary, the wife of Joseph. But it's the fullness of times. Human history is also pregnant and ready to deliver. All the kings and the kingdoms on earth have led up to this moment. Finally, Mary's in the stable DR, the delivery room. She's in labor now. The angels are crowding around, shoving one another, pushing, stepping on each other's wings. And Gabriel, the prince of Israel, calls out, Hold the line! Mary makes another push. And the angel's wings begin to flutter spontaneously from excitement. Every neck is craned. Every eye ready to behold the prince of heaven and earth. Hold the line, says Gabriel with a voice of authority. You would think he was the obstetrician in charge of this delivery. Mary makes another push. And then it happens. Jesus is born. And the word of the Lord came forth saying, Wah! Yes, one small cry for mankind, but one huge hush in heaven, a holy hush, for someone else is watching from a distance. Sitting on the throne of glory is God the Father. None of the angels dare speak or sing or shout until the Father has spoken. When Mary makes her last push, even the Father stands up. He peers down into Bethlehem from His throne room above. As Jesus is born, all the angels who can cram into the stable look at the baby, and then down the line the signal is given that Messiah, the Prince, is born. The news travels right on up Jacob's ladder into the third heaven. Now all the billions of angels know, and the Father knows, and there's a holy hush and a heavenly peace as all wait for the response of the Father. The silence hovers in heaven like a morning mist. And then, and then, 
the father smiles. Not a word. That would come later. Just a very satisfied smile. And then a heavenly hallelujah chorus broke out like we've never heard before. And the shepherds are told, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. But it's that holy hush I think of the most as I reflect on the birth of my Lord. The holy hush. The sounds of silence. Men have tried to put this in words to help us understand what we could not see and could not hear. And this takes me back a couple centuries to Christmas Eve, 1818, in the little village of Oberndorf, Austria, just about 15 miles north of Salzburg. The whole town was preparing to come to the Christmas service, the highlight of the season. But the parish priest, Father Joseph Moore, was worried. The chapel organ was broken, and because of the heavy snowfall, the repairman from the next town couldn't get there to fix it. The service would be devoid of the beloved Christmas music. For months, he had wanted to write a new song to express the simplicity and the holiness of Christmas. But the words had eluded him. That night, as he sat at his desk pondering what to do about the music, he saw someone struggling through the snow, the deep snow, coming toward his cabin. He heard a knock at his door. As he opened it, a woman stood at his door, explaining that a family from over the mountain had asked that he come to their home that night to bless their first child, who had just been born. The priest struggled. Across the mountain was a long walk and in heavy snow. He would never have time to write a Christmas song, but alas, his flock was more important than his music. God would just have to provide. Well, bundling up, the priest started out through the snow, and after several hours of walking, he came to the couple's cabin in the most beautiful scene he'd ever laid eyes on. There was the new mother in her bed smiling, as she and the father were looking in the little wooden crib beside the bed that held their newborn son. Father Moore admired the baby and blessed him and his parents. Then as he trudged home through the silent snow, he thought of the little family and how much it was like the scene in Bethlehem centuries before on the first Christmas night. Suddenly the words to a song began to flow as joy filled Moore's heart and as he arrived home, he wrote them down. That very morning he asked his friend Franz Gruber to compose the tune to the song. And that night Father Moore and Franz Gruber sang the song God had provided as a duet with a guitar. The name of the song, Stille Nacht, in German, coming through in English as Silent Night, Holy Night, All is Calm, All is Bright. Round yon virgin, mother and child, holy infant, so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. Yes, silent night, the sounds of silence from the holy hush in heaven have filtered down through the corridors of time to bring men and angels to their knees in reverent worship of Messiah the Prince, the babe born in the manger in Bethlehem in the fullness of times. May we take a moment of silence somewhere during this Christmas season to remember that holy hush in heaven. One small cry for mankind, but one holy hush in heaven.